Hello, fellas. Welcome back to Top 5 Choices. This is Haley from Top 5 Choices, and I hope you all are doing good. In today's video, I am going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best gaming laptops under $1,000, 2022. After doing proper researches, we came to the conclusion that meets the best in terms of overall. Kindly leave a like if you find this helpful, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications if you haven't. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use it for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. We'll be back with more videos. The Acer Nitro 5 brings with it quite a chunky, angular design. If you like black plastic with distinctive edges, then this could be the gaming laptop for you. The laptop has a certain amount of style to it, but there are certainly better looking models around, whether that's in terms of the design of the lid, which here has a very simple Acer logo on the back, or the available lighting options, you do get four zones of keyboard lighting to play around with, but nothing besides that. With dimensions of 255mm x 363mm x 2.4mm, that's 10 inches x 14.3 inches x 0.1 inches, and a weight of 3.6 kilograms, nearly 8 pounds, the laptop is reasonably portable and won't weigh a bag down too much. The power connector is around the back, and then you've also got an Ethernet port, an HDMI 2.1 port, three USB-A ports, supporting up to USB 3.2 Gen 2, and a Thunderbolt 4, USB-C, port. It's a decent selection of ports, and we should also mention that the latest Wi-Fi 6 standard is supported. You also get a webcam embedded just above the display. You can pick up the Acer Nitro 5 with either a 15.6-inch or a 17.3-inch 1920x1080 pixel IPS LCD display, and we were sent the smaller version for testing. It's a clear and crisp screen that works fine for movies and web browsing as well as games, though there's no danger of it being confused with the very best display panels on the laptop market at the moment. It's not great in terms of vibrancy and brightness, and the surrounding bezels are rather thick for modern laptops, but it does a job. You can get the Acer Nitro 5 in several configurations. Our review unit came fitted with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800H processor, 16GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 GPU and 1TB of internal storage. More powerful CPUs and GPUs are available with this laptop, but the model we had strikes a good balance between price and performance, the laptop managed to achieve a 3D Mark time SPI score of 7369 when we ran the benchmark between the averages for a standard gaming laptop, 5,730, and a gaming PC, 9,216. At a resolution of 1920 by 1080, we were getting frame rates of 40 to 60 frames per second on Red Dead Redemption 2 at medium, balanced, graphics quality, 110 to 120 frames per second on Grand Theft Auto 5 at medium graphics quality, and 40 to 50 frames per second on the newer and more demanding Cyberpunk 2077 at a good, ray-tracing medium, graphics quality. In other words, you can play all the latest and greatest games on the Acer Nitro 5, but you might have to make some compromises in terms of graphics settings. The HP Victus 16, 2022, is a budget gaming laptop available with Intel 11th Gen CPUs and dedicated NVIDIA GPUs. It's a sturdy-feeling laptop, even though it's entirely plastic, with a simple design that doesn't stick out in a professional working environment. However, it's bulky and heavy, and the battery lasts less than two hours when gaming, or just a little over five hours of light productivity. The keyboard feels great to type on, the touchpad is large and responsive, and there are plenty of ports, including an HDMI 2.1 and an Ethernet port. Its 144Hz panel displays a clear image in fast-moving scenes with minimal ghosting, but it doesn't support variable refresh rate to reduce screen tearing and doesn't get bright enough to combat glare. Its Intel Core i5-11400H CPU and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 GPU provide a smooth gaming experience at 1080p and can handle demanding tasks like video editing or 3D animation. It has outstanding performance over time as there's only a small amount of thermal throttling on the CPU, and it doesn't get overly hot or loud under load. Our HP Victus 16 has an Intel Core i5-11400H CPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 dedicated GPU, 16GB of memory, and 512GB of storage. The Intel Core i5-11400H and the lower end i5-11260H perform fairly similarly and can handle most games at 1080p. 
However, if you often play open world or strategy games that are typically more CPU intensive, it's best to upgrade to the Core i7-11800H. As for the GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 is the lowest end option and can push around 60 frames per second at 1080p, though you'll have to play at low settings in most games. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 and RTX 3050 T are a decent step up from the GTX 1650 and very close in performance, with the RTX 3050 T being only marginally better. Both GPUs can get around or slightly over 60 frames per second at high settings. It should come as no surprise that this budget gaming laptop is neither too flashy in its aesthetic nor fancy in its physical design. It's a simple, but reasonably compact, 15-inch system with a textured plastic finish on the lid and smooth plastic inside. The G315 won't win any design awards, but it won't offend, blends into any environment, and is mostly solid in construction, the rest of the build is similarly basic. The keyboard and touchpad are serviceable but ordinary. The keys have a bit of feedback, but the action is on the mushy side at the end of a press, and you may feel some flex on the keyboard deck. The touchpad is very simple, and it has a textured feel rather than the smooth glass finish of more premium laptops, but it does the job, while the system design is straightforward, the screen certainly has gaming in mind. The 15.6-inch display features a full HD resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate, a good combination for entry to mid-range gaming. The resolution is the modern standard, and looks sharp, without being extra demanding for budget-friendly components, more on those in a moment. The refresh rate ceiling won't be met in visually demanding single-player games on this laptop, but in simpler fast-paced games like your favorite MOBAs and Battle Royales, you'll see higher frame rates that components make or break a budget gaming laptop, so let's take a peek under the hood. Our $783.99 model includes an Intel Core i5-10300H processor, 8GB of memory, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650T GPU, and a 256GB SSD. Ours is the base price, starting unit, so there's no more price trimming to be done, but you can scale it up a decent way. It will remain an entry-level laptop, but you can outfit it with a Core i7 chip, up to a GTX 1660T GPU, and double the RAM and storage for a few hundred dollars more. 0.8 GB of memory isn't too surprising at this price point, even if 16 GB would be ideal. A mere 256 gigabytes of storage for a gaming laptop is really pushing it, though, as only a few leading-edge AAA games and your personal files would fill that up fast. Even just through the course of setting up the benchmark software and a few test games, I had to remove some as I went to make room for the next batch. Game installs are much bigger than they used to be, and often get bloated by updates, so being squeezed into 256 gigabytes is limiting on day one. I'd recommend bumping the capacity to 512 gigabytes if you can afford it. The HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop 15 2021 is an entry-level gaming laptop that's available with AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and dedicated NVIDIA GPUs. It's made entirely of plastic, yet it feels well-built and solid. It's also very easy to access the internals if you need to upgrade the RAM or add a 2.5-inch hard drive. The user experience is decent overall, the keys on the keyboard are well-spaced and have a good amount of travel, and there's a numpad if you often do calculations or work in spreadsheets. Its touchpad tracks movements well, although it has some trouble with multi-touch gestures. There's a decent selection of ports, including a dedicated HDMI 2.0 port and three total USB ports to connect all your peripherals, but its single USB-C port only supports data transfer and video output, so you can't use it to charge the laptop. Unfortunately, the screen looks washed out due to its narrow color gamut, and it doesn't get bright enough for use outdoors or in bright rooms. Also, it has poor battery life and can't get through a full workday, and it gets noticeably hot and very loud under load. You'll likely need a dedicated microphone for video conferences as the built-in microphone records muffled, nasally audio. I tested the Pavilion Gaming Laptop with a 1080p 60Hz display, an AMD Ryzen 5 5600H, a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 GPU, 8GB of RAM, and a 512GB SSD. The Ryzen 5 5600H is more than enough for most modern AAA titles and heavy creative workloads, but you can get the more powerful Ryzen 7 5800H if you need more cores and threads for applications like physics simulations or video editing. 
If you want features like ray tracing or DLSS upscaling in your games, we suggest you opt for the RTX 3050 or 3050T as the 1650 doesn't support either of them. Finally, you can upgrade to a 144Hz display for more fluid movement, which can improve aim in FPS games and potentially improve cursor precision in MOBAs. The HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop is decent for playing games. Its H-series AMD Ryzen CPUs and dedicated NVIDIA GPUs run modern AAA games decently well, although you'll need to opt for the more powerful RTX 3050 or 3050T GPUs if you want smoother gameplay at maximum graphical settings. It barely throttles, meaning you can play at maximum performance for extended periods. The port selection should be enough for all your peripherals, including a dedicated HDMI 2.0 port to output to an external display. When opening the ASUS TUF-F15, we had to do a double take to make sure that this was a TUF product and a not an ROG Zephyrus. For a bit of background, ASUS TUF lineup of gaming laptops and accessories is aimed at a budget audience that just wants the most bang for their buck. These products typically take a utilitarian approach to their design, but the ASUS TUF-F15 is anything but. This laptop is just 0.8 inches, 20.3 millimeters, thick, weighing in at just 4.5 pounds, 2 kilograms, making it extremely thin and light for a gaming laptop. Both the keyboard deck and the lid of the laptop are made of aluminum with a gorgeous gray colorway, so it doesn't lose rigidity for the sake of portability. The bottom of the laptop is still plastic, though, so don't think you're getting a unibody design or anything that's something still reserved for much more expensive devices, unfortunately. It does make the laptop easier to service, however. While the ASUS TUF-F15 is incredibly thin and light, you can still pop off the back of the laptop to upgrade your storage and memory. All you need to get inside the laptop is a screwdriver, and the bottom half of the underside will pop off, giving you quick access to the M.2 ports, two of them, should you need more storage in the future. When it comes to gaming laptops, we tend to think of them in one of three different categories. There are the ultra-powerful desktop replacements, the ultra-portable ones that let you get some gaming done on the road, and the ones in the middle that give you a little of column A and a little of column B. The Asus TUF Dash is definitely what we'd call an ultra-portable gaming laptop. So, while it does pack the latest silicon from both Intel and Nvidia, the hardware is configured in such a way that it won't burst into flames in such a tiny chassis, so you're not going to get the fastest RTX 3070 laptop on the market here. That doesn't mean that the Asus TUF-F15 can't tear through the latest AAA games, though. No matter what game we throw at this thing, it pulls an acceptable frame rate, whether it's Watch Dogs with RTX on, Assassin's Creed Valhalla or even Dirt 5.